Hi, this is David again with another segment entitled The Future of Art. Uh, I'm going to be painting this troll skull here. I may not finish it in the time of the video, but at least you'll be able to kind of watch how I do this. This is my common bridge troll design. And while I paint that, I'm going to talk about a way for artists to maximize their advantage during the upcoming social and technological changes that will be brought about by the continued rise of automation and the advent of truly intelligent robot minds. Now, this may sound like pure science fiction, but the people in the know, who are on the cutting edge like Elon Musk, view this as inevitable and likely to occur pretty soon. Now, I explained in my last video on this topic why artists may fare better than those in many other fields. Now, this stuff here, uh, I've said it before, but I'll say it again, Liquitex Professional Gloss Medium and Varnish. I love this stuff. It makes working with acrylics in a case like this so much easier. It makes the acrylics durable so that you can paint a coat on, let it dry briefly, and then just paint right over it without damaging the original layer. For my purposes, this stuff just is a fantastic. I go through a ton of it. So I'll be mixing this in with most all the colors I use most of the time. Let's see. drop of this. And I'm starting with some dark colors, which is a pretty common thing for me. I've got some relatively dark green. And let's see. Add a little black in there. Didn't want to go with 100% black or 100% green. looks. That's a decent dark color to work with. Although I think I'm going to thin it out a little. Just add a few drops of water here. So, in this video, I will be painting the skull, and I'll also be proposing a strategy to maximize the artist's advantages and how to implement it. Now, this may seem like it would be the last video I would do on the future of art since I am proposing a plan of action, but it will not be. I have many other interesting ideas about advanced art development that I will be doing videos on, including uh, horticultural living art, self-powered automated art, and you know, a lot of <laughs> a lot of wacky ideas. Uh, in this video, I will be talking about an idea as to how to maximize our advantage, because even though I think artists have a potential ability to weather the storm of automation and the rise of AI better than some other uh, segments of society and some other uh, professions. Uh, it's not something that just is going to happen on its own easily for the vast majority of artists because a lot of people do things inefficiently or have certain stumbling blocks in their way that prevent them from really maximizing their talents, even in the current environment. So when things get more difficult, it's going to be much more important to have uh, processes in place that will allow us to smoothly transition to a world where we're competing with machines. So now, part of the problems that art one of the part of the problems that artists encounter is the technical challenge involved in monetizing their creations. 
uh, really that's <laughs> pretty much the largest challenge. Because if you're going to be an artist full time, you know, the whole thing of the starving artist is is a cliche for a reason. Now, if you can't reach the high-end art market, which most people can't or haven't, haven't been able to, uh, what you're left with is low-end art market, which is selling to, you know, people like you, people that are broke. <laughs> now, when you sell to people that don't have much money, you can't sell your product for high prices. Which means that if you sell originals, you're stuck selling them for almost nothing in, in real terms. And I have sold many pieces of art, you know, at a wage that would make a, you know, it'd be on the level of a sweatshop. It's less than minimum wage. And you really can't get by on it. So... One of the things that some of the artists do is they make reproductions of their art. In my case, this is mainly sculptural. And this is an example here. I cast this from a original made out of polymer clay. And, you know, the original took me a really long time to make. And if I sold it for a hundred bucks, I'd be making almost nothing as, as a, like an hourly wage. Now, these guys that I make, the troll skulls, uh, the castings, I have to hand finish them, the molds are not fantastic, and, you know, it takes time. I don't have a standardized process, but I'm hand casting them, I'm hand painting them, hand finishing them, each one turns out a little different, which makes it interesting for me, but it makes it less practical and efficient in terms of economic viability. So, if you have a design for a sculpture or a figurine, getting it produced in large quantities at a, reasonable pr at a reasonable price usually requires large setup cost if you're having a uh, professional, professional uh, place do it. And, and to deal with this, again, most artists start off making their own molds and creating reproductions. It gives them, you know... A poor profit margin, poor return on their t investment of time. Uh, mold making, casting, all this stuff sucks up time that you could be using to produce original art, which is, after all, your primary talent, which is why you're an artist. You're not a person, in, you're not a you're not a mold maker by trade, and you're kind of doing it not out of desperation but in an attempt to compensate for the fact that you haven't hit that high-end art market. You're trying to create competitively priced products by becoming your own sweatshop. So, most artists do not have access to customers who will pay a premium for, their extra, for the extra work that goes into their art, and you're competing against cheap products from overseas because a lot of people view the end product, not the effort that goes into it. So if I make this skull and sell it for $20, I can compete with other people in the third world who are working for basically no wages at all, but through the whole process, the manufacturing process, the shipping, import fees and everything, you might get a plastic reproduction skull coming out of China in the twenty, thirty, forty dollar range. So if I work for cheap, I can kind of compete with those people in the third world and with the larger corporations producing a mass produced cheap product. But their profit margin is very good and my profit margin is very poor. So what we need uh, in order for artists to sees the advantage that they will have in this new emerging market where robot minds are competing with human minds in almost every area, even in the art area. But uh, I've explained before why we have a certain ability to compete even in that environment. 
Uh, we need to be able to create finished products in better materials like stainless steel, titanium, super hard ceramics, synthetic gemstones, you know, just a wide variety of high-end materials. We need to be able to make anything we want in any material that we want for a reasonable price. We need to be freed from the reproduction of our work so that we can focus on creation of original art, which is where we excel. So, uh, what I propose is that we create a high-tech manufacturing facility for a, a wide range of materials that focuses on and caters to artists. Uh, I've been calling this thing an art reactor for a while because <laughs> it's a you know it's a bit of a pun. Um, so you would ship a sculpture in, specify what it would be made of, be it steel, copper, silicone, or gold. It would be scanned, reproduced as cheaply as it's practical. Uh, possibly by 3D printing, but possibly also by die casting or other processes. <clears throat> uh, I mean, injection molding is an efficient way of producing things, but the setup cost is usually very high, and we could certainly bring that down to a reasonable cost with a different sort of mo business model and using different technologies. Um, so if you wanted to create, say, a functional car bumper made out of steel, you could get that made without having to mortgage your house to pay industrial scale setup fees. By having an easier, cheaper path to efficient production, the human artist will be on a more even footing in a world of mass-produced products, be they by human minds or the eventual sentient machines that are predicted to come into existence. Just flip my paper here. Uh, to set up a production facility like this would take a lot of resources, which is why I would like to suggest a crowdfunding solution for this. Uh, if there is sufficient interest, I'll start a crowdfunding program to start an artist oriented manufacturing facility capable of reproducing art, mostly 3D art. I'm not, we're not uh, so much concerned with printed art because there's a lot more accessible uh, 2D printing options out there. I, I, you, don't, you don't really need to push that one so much, but for making 3D sculptural art there really does need to be a, a better production facility, something where you can go in and create reproductions without mortgaging your house. Um, so if this should come to be, it will be set up in an economically troubled region such as Detroit because I try not to do a project that only accomplishes one thing at a time. If I can do, <laughs> if I can accomplish several goals at the same time, I always will. So if I can move uh, a business into a troubled region, then I'm helping people in that area as well as helping the artist community, you know, I'd rather do that. So I'll be, if we do set it up, if this does actually go anywhere, uh, we'll set up a manufacturing facility in some place like Detroit that's, you know, really in bad shape. And, uh, let's see, yeah, so this will be through a crowdfunding program. I haven't really looked into what platform to use yet and it's not really going to be relevant unless there's a lot of interest in this but if you would like to uh, contribute to a program like this where we would chip in to create a artist mass production facility uh, that would be able to create reproductions of your 3D artwork in high-tech materials that are not usually accessible to the artist community, then what you do is you go down to the comments under this video and put a comment in that says, if we were going forward with this in a crowdfunding format, how much you would be willing to donate. Uh, of course, if we do this, uh, there will be all kinds of giveaways and promotions and freebies and stuff like that which would be specified in the whole process.
for now, this is just, you know, just a proposal. And, you know, if nobody buys into it, then it won't go anywhere. But if I get enough people saying that they would want to fund this so that down the line they would have access to this facility, then we will set it up and I will let everybody know uh, when, when it moves forward so you can donate. So that's about it. Um, I didn't get very far in this painting because it's hard to do two things at once. Plus, this is kind of a slow process. Uh, but with the with the troll skulls, I usually go in and I do a, the darker colors first and then work my way up to light colors. Sometimes I have to go through the whole process a couple times before I get finished. Let me just pull up a finished one and you can take a look at that. This would be one of the ones that's finished. It's got some metallic colors in there. And each one turns out a little bit different. So that's about it for this segment. There are a lot more details that we will dig into if this becomes a reality. If this really interests you, add your message below the video with the dollar amount that you think you might want to invest in such a project. Uh, and, I mean, if it will be worth it to you. Uh, and to get more eyes on this video, like it, share it, and promote it to like-minded artists who might be interested in this as well. Uh, our next segment may be about the future of art relating to creating living sculptures from vegetable matter, such as tree bark and grafted plants and things like that. So, for the moment, that is it for this segment, and I'll see you next time.